Hello guys, how are you? Uh, this is the first video lesson for the week number three. I hope that you have had um, some good weeks. Uh, again, I know that we're all going through a difficult situation. Uh, so I really hope that you have been able to manage um, properly uh, some of the uh, academic assignments that you were doing. I know that you were taking um, classes with some subjects uh, on um, I hope I hope that that has been good for you that you don't feel too overwhelmed by that and, and I also expect that everything's going well with your families with uh, the places where you live and everything else now it's uh, as I mentioned a difficult time for everybody so uh, really take care of yourselves of your mental health of your uh, emotional well-being and, and hopefully uh, we'll be in touch soon. Um, well, guys, I would like to start this week by reading a poem for you, as usual, sharing some sort of uh, of literary piece. Uh, the difference is that, uh, well, this particular week we're going to have uh, something related to it with the exercise that we're going to be doing, okay? So let me start by reading it. This is by uh, Ernesto Cardenal. Uh, who is a Nicaraguan poet um, who wrote well a lot of different things um, well let me read it to you and then I will um, I will discuss it a little bit okay uh, this is called uh, Te doy Claudia estos versos Te doy Claudia estos versos porque tú eres su dueña los he escrito sencillos para que tú los entiendas son para ti solamente pero si a ti no te interesan, un día se divulgarán tal vez por toda Hispanoamérica. Y si al amor que los dictó tú también lo desprecias, otras soñarán con este amor que no fue para ellas. Y tal vez verás, Claudia, que estos poemas, escritos para conquistarte a ti, despiertan en otras parejas enamoradas que los lean los besos que en ti no despertó el poeta. Cuídate, Claudia, cuando estés conmigo, porque el gesto más leve y cualquier palabra un suspiro de Claudia, el menor descuido. Tal vez un día lo examinen eruditos y este baile de Claudia se recuerde por siglos. Claudia, ya te lo aviso. Otros podrán pagar mucho dinero, pero yo he sacrificado ese dinero por escribirte estos cantos a ti, a otra que cantaré en vez de ti, o a nadie. Al perderte yo a ti, tú y yo hemos perdido. Yo porque tú eras lo que yo más amaba, y tú porque yo era el que te amaba más. Pero de nosotros dos, tú pierdes más que yo. Porque yo podría amar a otras como te amaba a ti. Pero a ti, no te amarán como te amaba, como te amaba yo. Esta será mi venganza. Que un día, llegue a tus manos el libro de un poeta famoso y leas estas líneas que el autor escribió para ti y tú no lo sepas. Uh, so, I, I really find it uh, funny, somehow, because, well, he... Uh, um, sort of achieve what he what he wanted right that was uh, becoming a really famous uh, poet that wrote several books and i'm pretty sure that at some point uh, claudia got his lines and, and i don't know if she regretted i don't think so but but at least let's say that this objective that this guy was trying to achieve was finally uh, well it, it it came to fruition right like uh, uh, he became famous so he could like tell the world that he had this girl who rejected him at some point. Uh, well, as I mentioned before, um, like particularly this week, we are going to use this this poem that I that I have just read for you um, for something really important. And uh, this is it. Um, remember that last sessions uh, I discussed about. Uh, the difference between describing something physical, that was the exercise that we did in the week number two mostly, and describing something emotional uh, or intangible, right? Um, and how the second activity is a little bit more uh, complicated, right? So that is what we're going to be doing this week. Um, first of all, we're going to be describing these emotional things or intangible things and uh, then in the second part of the exercise we are going to to combine yes like to, to put together 
the physical and, and the emotional, and that is what we're going to do. You will see that this week uh, the videos will, will not be really long, uh, we mostly the instruction and, and some little discussions about that, but uh, mostly the work will be uh, on your side. Okay, and, and remember that that is what I mentioned since the week number one, that the instructions that I provide uh, is just a small part, a small part of, of uh, what we have in the course because this is a workshop. So most of the work, most of the advance, most of the exploration um, is going to be done uh, by you. Uh, so, um, well, um, at this point, I want you to please go to uh, to the post in which this video is, is published and you are going to find over there uh, two files, right? Uh, one of them, um, if you open, is a PDF uh, file and the title is Adjectives for Tone, uh, Feelings and Emotions, okay? So these are going to be uh, really essential for um, this activity and in general for, for everything that we're going to do in the future and hopefully for, for any other activity that you're going to do when you're using a description, right? Or, well, you know, um, sometimes we as uh, English students, of second language students, um, come across these lists of things such as prepositions, connectors, uh, adjectives, uh, verbs, etc. Right? So if you have a place for you, uh, well, for that kind of, of material in your computers, in your files, I would highly recommend that you save this, because for sure it's really, really useful. Okay? Um, so the first thing that I would like to, to mention in here would be uh, the intention of trying to use different vocabulary and different adjectives and different descriptive words, okay? And normally when we are um, managing emotions, we limit ourselves to two or three, uh, maximum four or five words. So happy, sad, angry, and that's it. Good, bad. Mm, so there is like a lot of different things uh, over here uh, in, in this list. Right, I'm mentioning for now like the, the, the first list, and um, you will see uh, something that is uh, like written in there in terms of, of columns. Right, uh, we have a pink column, a green one, and a blue one. Right, and then we have uh, another ones of the same color, but they have like different headings. So, my, my idea over here, guys, is that you get familiarized with these words that you are able to guess or, or, or look for the meaning of such words and you can use them in your descriptions, right? So let's take a look at some of them. Um, let's say that there are um, uh, two or three different definitions in here, like the definition of tone, uh, the definition of uh, feelings and the definitions of uh, emotions. Right, so let's just take a look of some of them. There is no way, like, I can explain the whole thing for you. I wouldn't do that even if we were in presential classes, and that is not the point of the list. Like, like to go one by one and memorize all of them. Uh, no, but but uh, the idea is that you are able to try to look for some of them and and uh, analyze when to use them and how to use them, and, and eventually be able to to employ them. Right. Now, um, what is a tone? Uh, and <laughs> here we come across a problem, and it's the problem of, of trying to, to describe or to define something that is intangible, right? So a, a tone, uh, or the definition of tone in terms of language tends to be, a, let's say, a mood, yes? A disposition, an emotional disposition that either a person has or that is generated by an action, a word, or something like that, yes? So let's try to, um, let's say, punctualize a little bit on this by using some examples. Um, when you have a particular tone of voice, 
uh, you can transmit different emotions. Yes? You can say, finish that. Yes? Let's imagine that we're dealing with a homework or something like that and imagine that, that uh, I am in the, in the classroom and telling you that. Finish that. And my tone in there is hopefully <laughs> friendly, educated, motivating, encouraging. You see, I have used like three or four different adjectives over there. And because of my tone of voice, it sounds that way. But then if I say finish that, you see my intonation, finish that. Uh, so it sounds a little bit more aggressive, right? It sounds menacing. It sounds, uh, let me think about another one. It sounds horring, like, go ahead, come on, finish that quickly. Uh, it sounds a little bit rude, right? So my tone of voice in the same uh, text, yes, the same, the same expression that is finish that or finish it, uh, has a different uh, emotion that transmits, right? So I am saying it that way. Um, and, and, and it's different. What if I say, oh, finish it, okay? So I am showing mm, like a tone that is disappointing, yeah, somehow like I expected that you had completed that in much less, less time, and now you're taking forever, and I'm doing that, or maybe the quality with what you're doing is not what I expected, and well, that it's frustrating, or well, all these different things. So. That is the definition of tone, for example, when we're dealing with voice, right? What about tone in terms of color, right? So let's imagine that we have uh, a tone that is, uh, for example, black, yes? But then this tone that is black has a scale of colors, yes? Maybe we can go uh, from black to gray, Yes, so it's more or less the same color, but then it is changed in the intensity. Or uh, let's talk about, um, for example, red and how it can uh, transform into pink, into magenta, right? Or how we can have blue and we can go to light blue or dark blue or something like that, right? So hopefully you get the idea of what is a tone. It's, let's say... Uh, the the variations yes or the different subdivisions of something has that that something has right uh, we already mentioned about the tone of voice we already mentioned about the, the tone of of uh, of the colors now in writing when you're describing something or narrating something let's say that a particular story or narration may have a particular tone so let's think about movies yes uh, let's say that uh, a movie such as Harry Potter let's say uh, may have a fantastic tone it's just like the, the, the let's say the, the way of, of, of the things that it projects right uh, but sometimes it has a playful or humoristic tone, yes, because there are scenes when there's something funny happening, some sort of comedy, right? So the same movie has a humoristic tone. Uh, but then uh, in, some, in some other movies of the same saga or, or in, even in the same movie that we're dealing with, uh, there are some scenes when somebody dies, uh, or, or when somebody uh, faces danger, or where somebody uh, receives a, a a really bad um, some some really bad news or something like that, so maybe the tone can change to uh, depressing, uh, let's say horror-like, uh, or dark or gloomy, right? So hopefully you get the idea, right? And all these different, let's say, environments, uh, feelings, emotions that a, a, um, a movie can transmit, or your voice can, trans can, can transmit, or a color can transmit, um, well, that, that is part of the tone. Uh, and of course, that, as a, let's say, 
complete uh, parallel um, books or stories narrations written production written text uh, can can also have different tones so we all know that the harry potter um, saga comes from a saga of books as well uh, and all these different things that i have already mentioned humoristic um, or uh, thrilling or depressing or, or, or horror like or uh, gloomy or dark all these different things can also be contained or expressed by a by a written text right something that you write yourselves yes can have a tone as well uh, so it can be for example informal if the vocabulary is simplistic and it's familiar and if you use for example contractions such as am or your or things like that right or it can be formal if it's a document that is a little bit more serious and has an academic purpose and you um, let's say write it as a um, as a report as an essay something similar right uh, so let's say that that is the general definition of tone um, I could give you only the words right and, and just get them uh, but the idea is that you like understand like what is what is uh, the tone so let me pick two or three of each column and give you some examples Let's say, for example, clever in the, in the first column on the left, that is the third word, clever. So I don't know if you know what is clever, but that is basically uh, intelligent or uh, resourceful or um, somehow uh, smart. So uh, you can say that something has a clever tone, for example, I can, uh, if you give me like a narration, uh, one of the adjectives that I can use for describing it is, this is clever, right? Uh, your report was really clever because I thought that it was intelligent, inno innovative, or, or things like that, right? Um, let's say uh, that in the second one, to describe a negative tone, we can talk about a hostile, right? That is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seven adjective over there between guilty and hurtful, we have hostile, um, and that could be... Um, let's say uh, when the tone is aggressive so for example I can tell you uh, the way in you ask your question was hostile is there something wrong with you do you have a problem with me like a personal problem or something similar you see so it has a hostile tone or uh, we can have other ones yes that doesn't necessarily uh, fit into positive or negative no so uh, we can have about, uh, let's say, uh, for example, candid. Yes, it's that's the, the number of three. Ambivalent, anxious, bashful, or the number fourth. Ambivalent, of anxious, bashful, and candid. Yes, candid, uh, it's like innocent, naive, uh, childlike somehow. Yes, um, so let's say... Uh, the girl asks uh, her question candidly or ask a candid question and everybody else laughed yes like she was so innocent that she was asking about something that was pretty evident for the rest and, and they laughed well, that shouldn't happen no? but I'm, I'm giving you like an example uh, so hopefully we have this uh, mm, somehow uh, possibility of, of of being able to to describe this right then we have feelings and emotions, right? Uh, well, there are there are some differences between feelings and emotions, uh, but I don't think it's like worth <laughs> our time to go very deep into that between uh, feelings and emotions. At least not not in this semester. Probably when we go into formas discursivas, and I hope to see you there, guys. Um, well, we, we can discuss a little bit more about that. Over here, like, we really don't have the need to do that. Um, because, let's say that they are quite similar in some cases. Uh, but, well, hopefully you're able to get them. So, again, we have these positive, negative feelings columns. And then the, the other, let's say uh, that we are going to talk about uh, bold. The number four on the list. Amazed, attractive, beautiful, bold. 
So being bold is like to be brave but careless somehow. Yes, um, it in Spanish for for you to like find a, a correct equivalence, it's just like audaz. Um, so um, I don't know, doing something bold, it's like I don't know, walking down a a, a, a a dangerous neighborhood at night. Yes, that may be brave at some point, but it's mostly like reckless, eh, careless. So that's a little bit. So he was very bold to walk, uh, I don't know, a certain neighborhood at night, uh, at 11 p.m., right? Then we have some other ones over here, like uh, aggravated, the first one, the first one of the negative feelings. Uh, aggravated means like when I feel insulted by something. Um, so I was aggravated by the comments that... Uh, this person did about me yeah so that would be aggravated and then we have some other ones such as the second one awestruck yes they describe other feelings we have the first one that is anxious mm -hmm. and then the second is awestruck yeah hopefully you remember this from the word awesome that it's like amazing or really incredible or uh, the first part a w e comes from that word or that means uh, uh, a big uh, surprise or a big uh, something that generates uh, the feeling of incredibility or something like that, right? So all struck is to be struck or to be hit, yes? By all, it means surprise, yes? So I was all struck when she told me that she was uh, an athlete with a lot of medals and she was only 12 years old. For example, right? So I was really surprised. I, I couldn't believe that. It was incredible for me. I was awestruck. Oh, that is an uh, an awestruck revelation, right? Very well. Then we have uh, the final part about feelings. Uh, let's do it with some of the different ones. Let's say ecstatic, and they describe a positive emotion. The first, the one on the left, it is one, two, three, four. The four, stat ecstatic. So, uh, this comes from ecstasy, right? And ecstasy uh, it refers to extreme pleasure, right? That is why this uh, synthetic drug that is called that way, ecstasy, uh, it's called that, that way because it's supposed to induce to a state of, of you know, bliss and happiness and somehow uh, almost supernatural uh, pleasure, right? Well, ecstatic is being really, really happy or really, really pleasure about something, but it's a superlative thing, yes? Like, I was ecstatic when I was able to finally graduate, for example, right? More than happy. Um, then uh, we have uh, the word uh, gloomy, yes? One, two, three, four, five. The fifth uh, word in the, in the list, uh, in the middle, describe a negative emotion, gloomy. Um, it means uh, depressing, uh, sad, frustrating, yes, uh, somehow an environment that you makes you cry, or makes you feel bad, or something like that. So, uh, let's say I received the gloomy news that I was infected with COVID. Yeah, well, that's something that would make you uh, somehow depressed or sad or, or you know, not really enthusiastic or, or, or positive about the future. Uh, let's go with the final one. Um, let's say confident. Yes. Uh, so I, I, I am really sure of what I'm doing. I'm really sure of what I believe in or something like that. Right? That's it. So we have this, this list of, of different things. And the idea, guys, is that with this and the second list that has another hundred words, there's another, there's another, uh, list that, uh, that is attached to this video and with that um, you're going to write one paragraph following the rules of the paragraphs like with an introductory, with three supporting, with one conclusion that is the minimum, remember always five five sentences you are going to look for a poem, a short poem uh, or, or a short uh, uh, narration online and you are going to describe uh, 
the emotions that it produces. Yes? So, let me give you a very short example for you. Yes? So, I think that... Uh, mm, Te doy Claudia estos versos, that is the, the, this poem. Uh, it is at the same, the same time loving and resentful. That will be my topic sentence. Yes. It is at the same time loving and resentful. Yeah, that will be my topic sentence. Then I will have three more definitions about that. You see, I have already used two adjectives. Loving and resentful. Yes. Uh, I believe that it is loving because uh, it is hopeful for the future uh, and uh, it is pleased to manifest uh, his love for Claudia. Supporting sentence number one. Yes. Uh, nevertheless, it is sarcastic at some point and um, um, let's say shows a depressed disposition. That will be my second supporting sentence. So in the first one I said uh, he shows that he loves a girl but then uh, he, he like says him sarcastically uh, because the, the, the girl doesn't love him back so uh, he, he uses some terms like this. Yes? Um, he, my, my third, my third uh, supporting sentence. He uh, shows himself irritated at points and pessimistic about what will happen in the future. Yes, so he shows himself irritated and pessimistic about uh, what will happen in the future. Right? So I have my three supporting sentences that prove that the guy is both like at the same time loving the girl but also <laughs> like feeling resentful or, or like with a little bit of a spirit of revenge. Right? My final part. In conclusion, I uh, consider that this attitude is a little bit toxic. The end of my paragraph, right? What sort of uh, conclusion did I use? An opinion, right? So that's it, you see? Pretty simple, not very long. You didn't have to write a lot. Uh, well, myself, I was doing this from the top of my head, uh, what, what came to my mind right now. Uh, so I didn't use, for example, uh, um, connectors or, or let's say uh, all these words that were transitional, right? Transitional words. But I hope that you make use of all that. So it's very simple. As I mentioned, just look for a poem uh, or, a, or a, uh, a short text that uh, is suitable to be described in terms of emotions, right? Take a look. Uh, at the example that I just gave you, if you want to return it and listen to it again, um, I never described anything that was physical, nothing that was physical. Everything was emotional and intangible. So you're going to do the same. Please copy and paste the poem or the, um, or the short text and you are going to describe it in that way. Okay? You can do it, for example, in the way that I did, that was feelings that I perceived that the author was trying to use. Uh, or, for example, feelings or emotions that were produced in you as a reader when you read that. Yes, that's another possibility. But basically that's it, okay? So please, this is going to be individual. Uh, look for this poem uh, and, and, and try to do it that way. Um, let's try to do it. Uh, I mean, the poem or the text can be in English, in Spanish, or in French. Well, those are the, the, the three languages that I manage well. Uh, so if you find something in German or in Russian or whatever, well, make sure that it, that is translated into any of the other uh, languages. But that will be only for the poem. The work itself, the description, must be done uh, in English, okay? So good luck with that. Um, something short, you know, you have to produce only one paragraph, no more. If you want to write a little bit more, that's fine. But for now, it's uh, only one paragraph, okay, guys? So uh, hopefully that's clear. Uh, that's it, and see you in the next video. That will be really short. And, um, and that's it. So thank you very much, and hugs. Bye.